Welcome back. Now that we have the basic functionality of our to-do list app done, it's time for us to focus on making it look like this. So we definitely have quite a ways to go, and we're just gonna attack this one piece at a time. I'll try and do this in the most logical possible order. We'll start with some of the bigger pieces, like the background colors and fonts, uh, making sure that we have the right margin and padding on this big container here, and then we'll focus on some of the more nuanced things. Okay, let's get started here. The first thing we'll do, I'll do a split screen. Let's start by just pushing this down. This is our container div. We'll add a margin to the top so that we have more space up here. So we'll go back to our CSS and we can close down our JavaScript for now. Our div has an ID of container and then we'll go and select that here, which we've already done. And rather than a margin of zero auto, we'll give it a hundred pixels on the top and bottom. And remember, we need the PX. If we have zero, we don't need PX, but if we have a number, we do. Let's take a look now. Okay, so now they are starting at the same place. They have the same margin there. The next thing we'll do is add a background color to this uh, container, which this one has. It's a little bit difficult to see, but when I delete something, it shows through in the back. It's this color right here. Let's show that again. Um, so we'll go ahead and add that. So inside of container, we'll say background and the color, I'll just read it out, is F7, 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 just like that. And let's check how that looks. Okay, so we have the same gray color that we have right here. It's the same light gray. The next thing we'll do is work on the border. And this actually doesn't have a border what it does have is a very slight box shadow. So we haven't seen box shadow yet. I'll demonstrate that here and go onto MDN. And it's just a way of adding a shadow effect. So if I scroll down, you can see here are some different box shadows. And we're gonna have a very light one, but if you notice around this, there's a really slight shadow. So the syntax and the shadow that we're going to use, we'll get rid of our border, is box dash shadow zero, zero, three pixels, and then a color. And our color is going to be just basically black, but it's RGBA, and then we're going to make it really, really transparent. So just barely noticeable. And if I refresh, we have no border now, but there's a slight shadow around this element. Okay, that's all we'll do to the container for now. Let's attack the H1. So this heading up here. So that is in our HTML, just considered an H1. It doesn't have an ID or anything, and that's fine. Let's go to the CSS file and start by adding in a background color. So we'll select H1, and the background is a color that is 2980B9. And we'll save and refresh and we now have the correct shade of blue. So we'll also change the font color to be white. And I'll quickly show you that. All right, slowly inching closer here. The next thing we'll do is give it no margin. And that will just get rid of this space that we had here. As you can see here, there is no margin. This is our H1. There is padding here. So the text doesn't go right up against the edge like it does here, but there's no margin on the outside of the blue box. This is our text input, and that also has uh, increased padding, but there's no margin around that either. So we'll begin by adding some padding around our to-do list H1. So here, we're going to add 10 pixels to the top and bottom, and 20 pixels to the left and right, and save. You can see we're getting closer. We need to change the font size, we need to change the font. We also will uppercase all of that. And we can do that. By now, you should know one of my favorites is text transform, uppercase. I just think it's pretty cool. There we go, we get all uppercase. The font size needs to be 24 pixels. So font size, 24 PX and save, okay. The last thing we'll do is make sure that it's a normal font weight. So an H1 by default is actually bolded 
and we don't want that. So we'll do font weight normal. Or we could also write font weight 400. There we go. Now it's just a matter of changing the font, which we'll come back to. The next thing I want to tackle is getting rid of these bullet points. So you can see we don't have any bullet points here. Those bullet points are considered the default browser style. So we'll override that. We're going to select the UL that they're inside of and say list style none. And if we go back and refresh, we now don't have any bullet points. Another thing I'm going to do is on our UL set the margin to be zero and the padding to be zero. And we'll refresh here. And that just got rid of the space on the sides of the UL. We do have space here that we need to work with, but that's the LI, not the UL itself. So we'll come back to that. Now let's add in the correct font. And the name of this font is Roboto, and it's part of Google Fonts. So I have that open here, and I'll just do a search for it. Roboto, and here we go, add to collection, and then use. And we're gonna want normal weight, we'll add in bold, and also medium. Now let's go ahead and copy this link to our HTML, and we can close this window. Go back to our HTML here, and just up top, paste that in, and save. Then we'll go to our to-do CSS, and we'll add some styles to the body. Everything uses this font, so we'll just add in font family, Roboto, just like that. And if we go back now and refresh, you can see our H1 is pretty much there, aside from this button, which we haven't touched at all. Uh, the font's the same, the color, the spacing, all of that's good. And our LIs are getting there. They have the right font. We need to work on some of the spacing and padding issues. The next thing we'll tackle are the background colors on the LIs. So every other LI, it goes from a white color, pure white, to this gray color that we have as a background of the UL. So we can use CSS to add styles to every other LI. So let's do that now. The first thing we'll do is select all LIs and give them a background of white. So we can do that with FFF or white or RGBA 255, 255, 255. And then we'll do every other LI. And the syntax for that is LI nth child 2n. And that 2n will define a pattern of every other. And if we did 3n, it would style every third, but we just want every other. And we'll make the background color the same F7, F7, F7 that we used for the container background. And refresh now. It's hard to see because they're a little small, but every other LI is now this gray color. So I'll add in a few more and you can see they alternate. Perfect. Now let's address the issue of the height of the LIs and also the padding. The first thing we'll do is give them a height of 40 pixels. So all LIs, height 40 PX, and we'll go back, refresh. Okay, so they take up the right amount of space now, if we compared them. The font has some issues, and also we need to add some padding. Next, we're going to change the line height property on the LIs so that our text is centered vertically. Right now, the line is basically this tall. We're going to make it take up the entire 40 pixels. I'll show you line height 40 px and that won't change the size of the font it just changes the size of the line it's now 40 pixels so the line takes up this entire area the next minor thing is the color we have pure black the color i used isn't exactly black it's slightly lighter so we'll set color and it is 666 Refresh, and there we go. Next, let's address the input. So we have a few things we need to do. The first of which is make sure that it takes up the right amount of space. So this input is much larger, and it's not just padding or margin. The font size is larger. Um, we have a new background color as well, and there's a border when we click. So let's work on all of those, and we'll start by just adding in a bigger font size. So we'll select input, font size, 
Oops. And we'll set font size to be 18 pixels. And while we're here, we'll do the background color as well. So background color, and it's the same F7, 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 just like that. And let's refresh. Okay, we're getting closer. The next thing we'll do is add a width. And the width that we're going to give it is 100%. So right now it's only going part of the way across the container. If we refresh, it now goes all the way across, but we have a few small issues. The first thing that we want to take care of is some padding in there. So we're going to add padding, 13 pixels on top, 13 pixels on the side, on the right, 13 pixels on the bottom, and 20 pixels on the left. So you can see on this one, we have top and bottom are 13, and on the left, there's 20 pixels. So if I refresh, we now have a bigger input that takes up the right amount of space. We do have a problem, which is that the input is now too long. When we said that width should be 100%, that width was actually just the content, and it didn't include the padding, and it didn't include the margin, which means that our input goes too long past the end of the div. And rather than messing with the padding, I'm going to show another way of changing it, which is a property called box sizing. So with box sizing, we have a few different options, but it basically controls how the box is sized of the box model. And we're going to change it to border dash box. And what this does, I'll just read. It says the width and height properties include the padding and border, but not the margin. So if we change it to border box, which I'll do now, we'll go into here. Just add box sizing, border box, and save. And before I move on, I will point out, this is one of those properties that we do want to have the prefixes. So the WebKit, the MOZ or Moz, and the MS for Microsoft. Um, I'm not going to do that now. It will be in the solution code, but it just takes a long time to type up. So it will work just how it is, in Chrome at least. I refresh, and now our box is including the padding in the border, but it doesn't include the margin. So we end up with a perfect fit. Next, I'm going to give the font a color when I type in there. So all we need to do, I'm gonna just take this same color from the H1 and go down to our input and just say color is that color. And if we refresh now and we start typing, there we go. Now let's focus on the effect when we click, which is called focusing in the input. You can see here, we get a border around it. So we need to work on that. Right now we have the default focus effect. So there's a selector for that, input colon focus. Just like the hover pseudo selector, these styles will only run when we have focused on an input. So I'm gonna make the background white when we focus on it. I'm also going to give it a border of three pixels solid, the blue color we've been working with. And we'll give it an outline of none. And outline refers to this annoying highlight that we get from the browser itself. Now, if we focus in the input, we get this new blue border and we also change the background color. So it's gray, now it's white. So that's all we need to do for the input, although we should go and add the placeholder text that we have here. So I'll go to the index HTML, and next to the input, or in the input, we'll add the placeholder attribute. And this can be whatever we want. I'll just make it match, so it's add new to do. And refresh. There we go.